Okay, in this problem, we're just computing the Heisenberg equations of motion for our fields. So phi dot should just be i with the commutator h and phi, just this. And then I can just notice that these two terms are functions of phi, so they will commute with this phi. So I can throw those away. And I'll just be left with this commutator of pi squared and phi. And you know, you can just expand this out and, um, you know, you'll get a delta function. Uh, it kind of works out just like an ordinary quantum mechanics. It's like, the it goes as like the derivative of its function times the commutator of, um, you know, just pi and phi. So I'll get basically a minus 2i delta x minus y. And so I'll just be left with a, a pi of x left over. Uh, so that one's easy to do. And then we can compute pi dot as well. This one's a little more complicated because this time uh, this first term is a function of pi, so it will I can throw it away, but I still have these two terms to worry about. So I've split it up here to these two things and pulled out the integrals because I can do that. And so this, uh, the first term here, it works out. It, it's just as easy to calculate as this term here. And basically, I'll get a, an m squared 2i uh, delta x minus y. So I'll end up with a minus m squared phi. Uh, but this term takes a little more work. So I can write this gradient of phi squared term as minus di phi di phi. And then you can use the normal, uh, so the commutator of ABC is ABC plus uh, ACB, uh, this kind of commutation relation. So um, yeah, so you can do that and then in these commutators, um, well, first off, so this di, phi, and pi, the commutator, eventually what I'll do is I'll pull out the, this di because it only acts on phi, so I can just pull it out of this commutator, basically. And so I'll end up with something like a derivative of a delta function, which is, um, you know, can be treated like a number. So basically, I can commute this over here, and then these two terms are, will basically be the same thing because then uh, the only difference is the order in which I can track them, which doesn't matter. So I can combine them and just work with this term, get rid of this two. So yeah, so I'll have this, and then again I can pull out this di phi here, or the, just this di operator. So it'll, I'll act on this commutator, but this commutator is a delta function. So I end up with basically the derivative of a delta function, and I can use the property of the delta function that if I have the integral of some function of x at the d delta of x dx, then that is the same as minus the integral of df dx with uh, delta x. So basically it just gives me a way of writing this derivative of a delta function in terms of uh, a, a delta function. And so I end up carrying this di to, so my f here is just di phi. So I end up with a di di phi and this minus sign and a delta function. And now I can just do the integral because of this delta function here. And so I get a minus m squared phi minus di di phi which can be written as minus m squared phi plus del squared phi. And so, and that is um, basically the Klein-Gordon equation. So, or, oh, sorry, you know what? It's if you combine these two <laughs> equations. So we have pi dot is equal to this, and we have uh, phi dot is equal to pi. So if I take the time derivative of this expression, I get phi dot dot equals pi dot, and so phi dot dot 
is equal to this, which is the uh, Klein-Gordon equation.